Hello y'all, welcome back. We are gonna be doing a fun little dresser makeover video today. I was very inspired by some other YouTube channels that I saw and some Instagram accounts and I basically have a few pieces of furniture that are heirloom pieces, if you will. These are hand-me-downs from like my great-great-grandmother. And so I really wanted to do them justice. Years ago, before my husband and I uh, had an appreciation <laughs> for these kinds of pieces of furniture, uh, I had him paint these black, this dresser black, uh, so it would go in our bedroom better. And, you know, he just took it in the driveway and slapped on some paint. So it's not, you know, he actually did a pretty good job considering all things considered, right? But um, now I want to give it a little makeover because it's hanging out in our living room. So we're going to start by using this stripping gel. And it says on the package that you can leave it on for 30 minutes and then start stripping. Now you'll see that that's what I tried this first time was just to put a, what I thought was a relatively thick coat. Again, if you're here because you love like furniture makeover videos, I'm not a furniture makeover expert by any means. In fact, uh, this is really my first time trying to do something really, really well with a furniture makeover. I've done some chalk paint stuff before, but this is me like really taking the time because this project took me, I don't know, probably a week and a half, two weeks total, uh, just, you know, because of life stuff, but also letting things dry in between and sanding and all the things I'm attempting to do, all the things you're supposed to do so that this piece looks excellent because I don't know if you can see behind me over there, that wrapped in plastic piece. I have a cedar chest that belonged to my grandmother who passed away last year, and I really want to refinish it. I don't want to touch it until I'm sure that I know what I'm doing and I cannot damage it. So as you can see, with um, just about 30 minutes of dry time on this or you know time for the product to work, it really, it got off a lot of the paint, but certainly not all of it. And as I've learned, so anything I tell you here, I'm, it's just because I've, someone else has told me and I've learned it, to use a plastic scraper here so that you're not damaging the wood uh, with a metal scraper. You can see that it's doing a pretty good job, but it's certainly not getting all of it off. Um, so I am going to, what you'll see in a second here is I'm going to do another coat of this stuff and then I'm going to wrap the piece of furniture in a plastic wrap in like cellophane in order to help number one, keep the product moist. Cause so long as the product itself, the citrus strip or whatever it's called, so long as that stays moist, um, and doesn't dry out. It continues working and um, obviously you know you put plastic wrap over a chemical product like that and it kind of just keeps it in and keeps it working so that's what I'm gonna do as a next step is to put another coat of that stuff on and then wrap the whole thing in plastic the next scraping obviously went much better and now I'm gonna move on to sanding there's a lot of things that I um, didn't didn't get footage of or thought that I did and can't find it so I'm gonna explain everything as we go but um yeah so i found this uh, i believe it's called a cat corner sander um through a recommendation of another person who does like furniture flipping stuff there's another sander that costs a lot of money and this is like the cheaper version of that y'all i cannot remember the grit of the sandpaper that i started with but i started with a much more medium grit sandpaper and then worked my way down to a or up, I should say, worked my way up to a finer grit sandpaper. And um, I really am just trying to sand out any imperfections, uh, you know, because initially when I decided to do this, I was actually kind of wanting to do like a high lacquered finish on this dresser. And you'll see with the paint that I ordered and everything, that was kind of the direction that I started with. However, Upon doing the project and kind of watching some other content, I realized that I just don't think that the, the way that I was doing this and you know the processes that I was using and stuff was going to end up giving me that high la that really truly like lacquered finish. It didn't turn out that way in the end, but that's part of the reason I was taking so much time to be so precise with uh, the sanding and the prep of the piece, because if you want a very lacquered finish, it really cannot have any imperfections. So that's why I'm being so, one might say, anal about this part of the process that I might not have been had I known that in the end I was going to end up with more of a matte satin not high gloss finish so yeah 
Sanding, sanding, sanding. I did this um, multiple times, obviously. Drawers, dresser box, everything. Sanding, sanding, sanding. So next thing I'm gonna do is attempt to fill in a little bit of the wood grain. This is something that, again, I saw on a YouTube video. Basically, she suggested to mix plastic wood with water and paint it on with a brush, go the opposite direction of the grain to try to help kind of fill in and then we'll sand uh, in hopes that we get the wood grain to disappear so we can get a nice smooth finish. And again, I chose to do this because, like I said, I had initially planned on going for a very high, like lacquered finish. So, you know, you really want the piece of furniture to be smooth for that. So this was my attempt at filling in. And I will say, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking up where you can see like a child at some point, like kind of drew on the side of the dresser and scraped it. I'm, I don't even really know what that is, to be honest with you, uh, but, that kind of stuff definitely got filled in. It did not, what I used here, maybe I watered it down too much, I'm not sure, but it did not completely fill in the wood grain. You can still see the wood grain, is particularly on some of the drawers, not as much on the tops and sides as you can on the drawers. Uh, perhaps again, I just sanded better on, those, on this piece, uh, I'm not really sure. But uh, there's another product out there that I ended up ordering, but I didn't use on this piece. So I've got lots more furniture that I'm gonna be giving makeovers to because, well, I really, really enjoyed this process and I really enjoyed the end result. So I'm gonna you know, keep doing this. Um, so I will test out some of those other products in the future. And uh, perhaps in the future, we'll actually put together the paint room and get the sprayer and everything that we need to do a truly like lacquered finish on a piece of furniture because that's my dream is to complete a project like that that looks just you know beautiful glossy beautiful the next step is I decided what I wanted to do was you know again the look that I'm going for for this is very like um grand millennial granny chic kind of very southern coastal charleston-esque so i found these half uh half rods of uh, bamboo i will link the name of the website that i found them from uh, they were affordable and shipped very fast and the company was just absolutely fantastic so i will be ordering more things from them in the future for projects because they've just been absolutely wonderful uh, it's a woodworking uh, company. But anyway, so these come as half rods. So I uh, basically put together just these little, you know, decorative fronts for the dresser to spice it up a bit, give it a little bit more character and add a little bit more of that kind of Southern charm that I was going for, particularly with the color that I picked, which is a very traditionally Charleston green color. Uh, I knew I wanted to add in just a tiny bit of that bamboo element. So I am uh, didn't film a bunch of that, but I you know basically just used those quarter round cutters to cut the corners uh, at the right you know 45 degree angles, and then I used the wood glue to secure them. And then I didn't show this, but I did go through and add some of the I don't know why I guess I pronounced the word caulk wrong because I do kind of pronounce the L, and I guess you're not supposed to. I don't know, but I don't want to just say caulk. That sounds uncomfortable, isn't it? Caulk like you just say it fast I don't know I got told I said it wrong last time so now I'm like nervous about saying the word caulk <laughs> but anyways uh, so this painting method that I am using a foam roller so I saw this on I believe it's black sheep furniture black sheep homes black sheep something I will link her channel down below because I want to give her full credit for this method um, because I didn't want to use a paint sprayer I don't have a place set up to use a paint sprayer at this point um, and I don't own one that I think would work well for this kind of project. I have a giant paint sprayer that we use like outside for outside painting projects. And I'm just not even sure how I would do that. So I wanted to try a method that would allow me to use a paintbrush without leaving brush strokes. And so I had seen a video from her where she said, you know, you use these, uh, you paint it on and then you use these foam rollers over the top and roll over it. And it kind of gives you the rolled on effect but easier right it is easier to put thing to put paint on with a paintbrush uh, but then you just roll over it and that gets rid of the paint lines 
and uh, just makes it look more like a sprayed on finish. So that is what I did for this project. That's what I did for every single layer of this project. And the foam roller is dry when you begin, obviously, like you're not dipping the foam roller in to paint, you're using it dry. And I did just use the standard uh, foam rollers that I found. I believe they were uh, made by Wiz, I can't remember, at Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever. Uh, but I did also see that some people recommended this particular kind of black foam roller, and you'll see me use that on future layers of this, and the black one works so well. The ends of it are like concave, so it doesn't, I don't even know how to explain the difference, but I can, as somebody who's not a paint expert, I can tell you that that black one, oh my gosh, it comes in a pack of three, and they work so so well for this painting method and the other thing that I'm doing just so y'all know like while I'm testing and doing these projects it's not just for furniture but because I want to refinish our kitchen cabinets myself I don't want to hire somebody to do it but I also don't want to muck it up because we have a ton of kitchen cabinets and our kids we have eight kids and dogs and people that are hard on cabinets so it won't withstand a crappy paint job so I wanna make sure that I really understand all of the different methods. Uh, I am gonna be getting a sprayer uh, to use on some future projects. So I will likely be doing a combination of the paint and roll with spraying for our kitchen cabinets, but I'll be sharing that in an upcoming video as we do that project. But um, yeah, I wanted to save some money and do it myself. Um, so we'll see that's I'm trying to build my skill set so that I can use it on future things but yeah so we're just doing the painting on and then rolling with the dry foam roller obviously it I mean it doesn't stay dry but it doesn't it's also not soaked with paint necessarily either so that's the method that we're using and then we will guess what it yep that's it sand that's right sanding 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 so for the paint for this project, again, like I said, initially I wanted a very glossy finish. So I did go with a Ferro and Ball paint. I used this brand of paint in my daughter's room when I did my makeover for my teen daughters, which I haven't edited that video and put it up yet. I will get there, I promise. And the quality of the paint was just so incredible. So when I was kind of looking for an option for the high gloss finish that I was going for, this paint came up as an option and uh, they had the exact like literally the exact green color that i was going for it's the charleston green uh, that i was looking for and um, yeah so i decided to order um, order that and use that for this project i'm also using for the actual painting on i did get a few like more specialty brushes that have some different shapes and stuff for being able to get into corners and cracks and crevices better um, so I was using kind of a combination of two different brushes to brush this on, trying not to get any big goops of it anywhere in the corners, making sure that it got into everywhere, and then rolling over in long strokes so that even the roller hopefully isn't leaving behind too many like roll marks. So you kind of want to paint it all on one area and then roll that whole area in a long stroke. And depending on the kind of paint you're working with, this is an oil-based paint, so it, it takes longer to, to cure basically. So that gives you more time to work with it. If you were using like an acrylic paint, like a regular kind of paint, I can imagine that you probably wouldn't have time to wait to roll it. You know what I mean? You'd have to work in much smaller sections, which could be hard to get that kind of long stroke that you need to get from the roller. Part of, again, why this project took so long because I really wanted to let each layer of the paint that I worked with to let it really set uh, because it is that oil-based paint and almost like enamel type finish and I knew it needed time um, to kind of cure before we started sanding and doing another coat. So this is after two coats. Um, and there are some little marks on it, some little, you know, just again, I'm not painting in a completely uh, secure place where nothing can fall into it. And so I'm going to take a little paint scraper and go around and um, kind of, you know, use that to scrape off any little bubbles or spots or pieces of dust or debris that might have fallen into that while it was curing. And then I went around with tack cloth and just made sure that after I had done that, that light bit of sanding and 
removal of any debris and everything, I went around with a very, very, very sticky tack cloth and uh, attempted to remove any kind of debris. Um, in between layers, you want to really, really, really clean your brushes. You want to use a new foam roller um, between every um, coat or at least a completely clean and dry one uh, because I did learn the hard way that you know even when you think you've just decently cleaned your paint paintbrush and stored it you end up with a lot of like little chunks that get in that paintbrush the other thing that I would probably do differently is that I would run my paint through a strainer before I put it into the cup to paint with and use uh, just little things like that that are, you know, time consuming things that I thought, oh, not a big deal, but might have saved me um, some time in the long run of sanding and all of that if I would have taken the time to strain the paint and all of that. So, again, I really should have done that for this final coat because I think that would have helped uh, make it even more, you know, of a perfect finish. But according to Black Sheep Farm, this is the method that she uses. So, this is what I am doing for the final coat, which is to mix half paint and half of the polyurethane uh, top coat that you want to use. I'm using a different one than the one she uses and I probably should have just gone to the store and gotten the one that she uses. I have used this one many times for other pieces of furniture that I've stained. I like it a lot. I don't quite know how to explain it in the end. There was a, I, I don't know, I felt like I could see even though it's supposed to be clear that I could still see that there was some poly on it on the piece of furniture not just the paint if that makes sense uh, but this method works extremely well for her so this is probably a me thing why I feel like I didn't quite do it right but you want to mix those and again really wish that I would have taken the time to strain the paint um, because you know it's the final coat right you want it to be perfect um, so you'll see like some little white spots there where I had picked off you know little debris that had fallen in and stuff but we're just gonna do the same method final coat paint it on roll it with a clean foam roller and uh, let it set now it is time to put the drawers back in and add the hardware um, i found on amazon just some really cute cabinet pulls uh, that i felt like just very much went with the theme of this dresser they weren't too gaudy of uh, gold color uh, but they have that like bamboo effect to them that I thought would kind of, you know, go well with the dresser. I, I like how ultimately it all turned out. It took me a bit. This is very hard wood, y'all. Very hard wood. It took me a bit to drill the holes for the hardware um, because I wasn't reusing the old holes. Uh, it was different kind of pulls on here before. So I wasn't reusing those. So I had to kind of go back through and, and line them up and uh, can't see the Sharpie marks on there, but I did do measuring and make Sharpie marks for where I was. I wasn't just flying blind here, installing the hardware. There is the final result. I absolutely love it. I will link down below in the description for you guys, the paint, the hardware, where I got those half round bamboo uh, pieces. I really, really love how it turned out. I kind of gave it a little scratch test with my fingernail in the end to make sure that you know, my kids just walking by and touching it aren't gonna be able to like scratch it and scrape it. It's definitely not perfect, but to be honest with you, I would be comfortable putting it up for sale and selling it to somebody. I, I do feel like the finish uh, turned out well enough and high enough quality that, you know, I would take it and put it somewhere on consignment or sell it um, with confidence. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I am excited to do more furniture makeovers in the future and I will see y'all again soon. Bye.